Okay, so here we go. We have this uh, running Kaggle kernels with the GPU. So this one is about four months ago. So Kaggle has a uh, enabling GPU for free, right? So you can do like 12.5 speed up. That's really cool. Um, then the normal like uh, CPU over here. CPU is. 13,000 and then 12.5 speed up total runtime whatever okay now GPU is only 994 seconds okay so um, oh there's a deep learning course here I want to see what does it work one more one more time what okay okay scratch that whatever um, <laughs> We'll come back to that later. It says the fastest way to get us to speed you can run your project. We're also adding new image processing to the dataset to our dataset platform. Many competitions, okay. Um, so adding a GPU, you click this one, click the settings tab, and enable GPU, blah, blah, blah. The data is, is a 29 different signs in American Sign Language. Let's see. Oh. Okay, but, this, but basically there's A to Z, 26. Oh, it says 26, A to Z, and then three classes. Um, the training data is 87,000. Oh my gosh. 200 by 200 pixels. Okay. Space, delete, and nothing. Okay. Very helpful in real-time application classification. The test data set contains a mirror. Okay. Uh, what is the person is saying? Okay, so basically, um, you are you are you are given an image, eighty-seven eighty-seven thousand images, and then you your algorithm is supposed to uh, classify this. Um, uh, uh, 20, uh, 29, 29 classifications, right? American Sign Language. This is cool. Okay. So, the data is, uh, it's using Keras, right? Um, Keras is a, is a release, is a, is a framework um, high level uh, on top of, I think, TensorFlow. Um, TensorFlow, released by um, one of the Google uh, people there. I think uh, one of the Francois Cholet. I think this is French. Um, anyway, they are supposed to be really, really easy, right? Very simple. Um, ensure consistency across runs. So uh, you have to use seat. There's seat one here, and then there's seat two. Oh, hold on, hold on. So it's using Convolution 2D, right? I'm not sure about this one, dance, and then this drop out, flatten, and then it's using sequential, right? I think there's a several model for, for the Convolution 2D. This is using sequential. Um, I, I guess um, this is like a feedforward network instead of like the recurrent, the one that's like looping or like um, going going back, the, the, the input uh, going, can go back or even go sideways uh, to the other neurons. Um, in circumstances across runs, okay, so there's seed. I'm not sure about this, but okay, let's say you're using two seeds here. One from NumPy, one from TensorFlow. Um, and then Oh my gosh. Uh, okay, so import to, to few data. Import CV2. Um, uh, so, but this is this is the data. Yeah. So you have you have the oh you cannot see it. Okay, you have the, the testing and the training. 
Anyway, okay. And import club. I'm not sure about that. What is club? Import club. I think it looks like it's for file name pattern matching. Club function. Um, club matching pattern. Even though the club area is very simple, the module packs a lot of hours. You can see where your program is to look. Needs to look for a list of files on the file system with names matching a pattern. Oh, okay. If you need fa list file name, they all have okay, extension. Okay, example, example relation is following test file are present in the current working directory. An asterisk matches zero or more characters. In it. The pattern matches every pattern. Okay. Club directory. Okay. So it's basically to look for a list of files on the file system with with name matching a pattern. So this one is looking a uh, directory which um, has anything anything on the on the folder of the directory of dear here. So it's looking for that. Okay. So I, I think it's just make it easier. Okay. Um, I think I understand. <laughs> uh, import method, import pilot as plot. This is to, to, to draw, basically to, to plot the data. Um, import floor. I'm not sure about that. Import numpy. Um, what is that? From numpy, import floor. Wait. Floor. Um, return the floor of the input. Uh, what is a floor? Floor. The floor of the scalar x is the largest in integer. Oh, i. There is such that i is less than x. Oh, okay. Okay, it's the largest integer. Okay. Give me, give me an example. Okay, NP array, NP floor A. The largest um, the floor of the scalar X. Is the largest integer i? What? Okay. The floor of minus two point five is minus three. The floor of minus two point five is minus two. Okay. Okay. Is is the largest? The scalar is the scalar x is the largest integer i. So I said i is less than x. Okay. So this is i is this less than x. Okay, so, so you're looking looking the largest from this integer, right? That still is um, floor a. How about this one? Oh, so for every every sequence, so, so minus one, one point seven. It's minus two, minus two, minus one, zero, one, two, one. Okay. 
Hmm. Okay, it, it seems like it's being like um, um, what do you call that? Oh my gosh, my my brain's not working. It's being um, rounded rounded up or rounded down. So if it's if it's negative like this, the floor of this is basically is rounded down, right? Everything actually is rounded down. 2.0 2 become 2 is the same, right? 1.7 become 1. 1.5, yeah. But the one I don't understand is this. Well, this is correct. Minus 2.5 is become minus 2. Okay, got it, got it. Okay. Okay. I think I got it. All right. Import random. Okay, this is just for a uh, random variable. Okay, so this is uh, the function. Um, right, um, blah, 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 three samples, letter print, you have to press part, uh, plot show 131, uh, image show subplot, so plot three samples. Okay. This is, these are the sample images. Okay. And then the data processing. Um, this is the one that we need to classify later on. So I guess this is the, um, this is part of the, the training data, right? Um, so you want to directory, okay, the target size and classes. Oh, this is the classes. Yeah. Okay. The target size is 64 by 64 um, times 3 because it's a 3 channel RGB. So if you look at the data here, is 200 by 200 pixels. Okay. So I guess, uh, I guess they, they sort of like um, cut it to 64 by 64. Am I right? Um, I don't know. And then there's 29 classes. Uh, well, right, that's size. I'm not sure about that. Data augmenter. This is the one that's uh, you're, you, you're like um, augmenting the data. So it's, it has a different orientation. So it's, it's like rotating the, 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 the image. So it's more like, um, how do you say, more generalized. The, 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 um, the, 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 the algorithm oh. oh my gosh so it's more generalized the model that you're building sorry guys my mind is not working it's three o'clock uh in the afternoon i'm supposed to uh like take a break or something um okay i'm not sure about file frac point one validation split oh i think this is for the validation split split you have to split it like like 10 percent right Okay. And then sample start normalization through trend generator data augmenter flow. Data says target that's true subset is the training. Okay. Data, data directory. So is this, this is uh, the training, right? What is that validation? Okay, so this is to, to process first, data processing the setup. And then this is the model specification is using a sequential, right? Okay, let's 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 do this first. Let's let's fork it. Okay, fork notebook. And then we are good to go. Let's see. I'm so excited. Your code isn't committed yet. Click commit to execute it to top button and share and submit your work. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. Okay. Select the settings step. Where is the settings step? Should I click this? Community around your work from top. 
சொல்லிக்கு வந்து இருக்கு டிசிப்ளி ஐம் நாட் ஷியூர் இஃப் ஐ ஹாவ் டு டூ தட் திஸ் இஸ் கேன் ஆஃப் லைக் மை ஃபர்ஸ்ட் டைம் ஐம் ஜஸ்ட் லைக் ட்ரை டு லேர்ன் எஸ் 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 ஐ கோ okay so is committing it it's running the code but i haven't enabled the gpu yet okay Let's see um I'm going to go to my other I'm sorry guys you cannot see my other monitor here but I'm trying to see if what is he doing here okay on the YouTube channel Okay uh so the first thing we're going to want to do is what I'll talk about that uh make sure that we have our GPU turned on so this is going to be under settings and if we scroll Okay I think I think I'll just cancel this first I think I'm doing it the wrong kind of the wrong way Okay. Cancel. Um, return to editor. What? Wait, 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 wait. All right. So, let's get started forking this notebook and then going through and running uh Dean's code and then uh modifying it. Okay. Uh so the first thing we're going to want to do is what I'll talk about that. Where is the Okay. Ah. Oh. But I'm looking for um shift and wait 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 wait, wait. how do i go to settings um oh the gpu is already on oh okay okay guys so here is the gpu and internet block why block okay whatever i'm just gonna docker latest available language python still private okay um uh make sure that we have our gpu turned on so this is going to be under settings and um, if we scroll down we see that our gpu is enabled so we're all good to go because we forked a notebook where the gpu was enabled um and this is a uh, nvidia tesla k80 and we have 6 hours of run time okay so the gpu is already on oh what did i do okay is this is just going to the uh, github api the documentation is over here okay I'll go how to use that. Okay. Okay, so um time. Uh yes, it it is available. It's fairly new. Um and depending on on load. So these so cool guys, you don't have to set up like any any other GPU, you can just everything is already here on Kaggle. Everything is already set up. The Python, the GPU, all the 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 setting that normally it takes hours you know it's here and it's free how amazing is that okay so let's 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 break this down man 
let's break this down so you got this uh, data right the data is here right okay that's the data the test zip and the training zip oh my gosh this is so cool right um, there may or may not be uh, in there can sort of little um, pixel picture okay so Can you see it from here? Oh, you can see it. Can you, oh, wait. No, you, you cannot see that. Wait. I'm trying to see. Um, the one that's showing you all of those uh, American Sign Language thing. Right. I couldn't see it. Okay. Why, 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 why? I couldn't see anything. Okay. Sure. Um, All right. So we're importing a bunch of stuff. Uh, we're using Keras, which is a high-level library for specifying what your model will look like, so you don't have to do a lot of stuff. Um, okay. I'm just I'm just gonna close this first. Okay. We'll we'll just go through this really quickly. So we we we've kind of gone through here, right? Um. So um, let's see. When we use this, we're probably going to be importing LSTM instead of uh, convolutional two-dimensional neural networks. Uh, sequential will probably want. Uh, we're probably not going to want that. And then we're just going to look at some of our raw data. So this will import a bunch of stuff, and then it will show us what some of our uh, data looks like. So. Okay. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna run this probably. All right. Can I run this? How do you, how do I run this? Shift, shift, com, enter. Oh yeah, shift. Hi, I'm recording. You can come in. It's it's yummy. Yeah. That's that's my daughter is coming. So she's just coming, uh, come back from school. Um, yeah. So this is a sample from for A. Right. There are three samples. Um, Rachel, look, this is an American Sign Language here. And then uh, let's do plot three samples. Uh, shift, enter. Sample images for letter B. Woohoo! Okay. I got it. I got this. I got this. I got this. Come on, baby. And then this is uh, data processing, so basically um, trying to put the the the, uh, the 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 training data inside the uh, a, a, a holder, and then trying to augment. You want to see American Sign Language? The picture here. Come here. Come here. <laughs> it's okay. Um, okay. So we'll 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 run this. Um, Shift enter. Um, oh, it doesn't do anything. What happened? What's happening? What's happening? Oh god. Okay, so it found seventy eight thousand seventy eight thousand three hundred images belonging to twenty nine classes. How cool is that? And then now we are going to uh, uh, load the model, load the model up. So it's using convolution two dimension, 64 kernel size is four. This how big is the the, the, the kernel? Uh, so convol convolution uh, neural net is working by um, basically uh, scanning the the whole images. which is in this case 64 by 64 times three, the uh, red, green, and blue. 
and you are basically putting a window the kernel size is four I, I, I think that's four by four pixels strats one I think is being being uh, just like shifted shifted by one if, I, if I'm not mistaken so if you go to like a uh, CVV, I think CVV, right? Is it CVV? Uh, no. CNN strike. CNN strike. Um, strike controls how the filter convolve around the input value. In the example, okay. Yeah. Let me just so this is your your you're basically like just shifting it. I think you can go go to Quora here. What does strat means in the context of computer neural net? It's not working. Nobody's answering. Um a is the strat of the filter, how much you shift the filter in the output. Okay, so you're shifting it, right? Okay, so, yeah, I, I don't really understand what are the significance of that, like, uh, like how, how do you decide whether you're gonna shift it or not, but anyway, okay? The input shape, I'm not sure about this too. Input shape, target themes. Um, uh, we can we can do this, yeah. And um, in, input shape, um, target theme. Let's see. Um, target dimension. How to make output dimension match input. Hmm. Okay. Input shape. Uh, let's see. Grass. Let's go to grass here. Input shape. Input chip, where is the input chip? Kernel size, strides. Huh. Conclusion to D. Uh, arguments here, yeah. where is the argument? Um, wait, where is the input chip? It's not there. Okay, I don't understand, why? We have everything. We have dilation rate activation use bias kernel is initializer. Where is the target dim? Um, uh, oh here, here. Oh, it's 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 not belongs to your argument. It's it's belong to input chip. Okay. There you go. Ah, now I got you here. Okay, sorry guys. Here, input chip. So for D tensor with chip, bats channel. Row. Oh my gosh, I still don't understand. What is this for? Anyway. Okay, let's let's go back to that later. Okay. See, the thing is, guys, you don't have to understand anything. Uh, I mean, not anything. What I'm talking about, you don't have to understand everything, right? As long as you understand, like, what is the ballpark, then you go run with it. Um, later, later, you know, like during uh, doing other stuff, you will probably get it later, and then you will like just click into the into the into the into your brain. But the most important thing, you just do it, right? And then if you don't understand something, right? Um, you just Google it right away. Especially if you have the curiosity what to understand. That's the secret of learning. 
you just go go as you go i mean do it right you don't understand something google it and then that's the way you sort of your brain um learn really well just like that instead of you're learning all everything like the the traditional way of uh, learning right you your teacher like even you go to school even you go to college or even like you go go to like um, uh, online courses like to, um, Udacity or on Coursera yeah? you just learn like you just read and then you feel sleepy and then you get bored right that is not the most efficient way of learning the most efficient way of learning is you have to be driven by your curiosity right so and this is proven to be scientifically the most effective way if you are curious uh, your brain will be engaged. If your brain engaged, then you can absorb that material so much, so much more better. And the uh, uh, retention, it's so much better. So you won't forget it easily. And besides, it's, it's more fun like this, right? So, and, and by the way, if you, if you try to like um, uh, run, um, uh, still look for it and then you still didn't get what you want uh, you can get the answer it's okay Let, later on we'll come back again you know you just keep, keep on like um, doing like if this is like your thing you keep on like researching one day it will like uh, like click in your brain right yeah for some reason whether you talk to your friend or you just like doing other projects or you just like chilling down you know <coughs> so not to worry about that I've been like wasting a lot of time by just studying the old way of studying, you know, just by like learning, like, oh, you have to do this first before you have to do this. Like, for example, there's people in deep learning that saying that, oh, you have to study linear algebra first, you have to study statistics first, you have to study uh, calculus first. That's bullshit, okay? Well, if you want to study the boring way, please go ahead. But uh, I tried it, you know, I, I can only like do it for a few minutes and then if I lost interest then I fall asleep this is much better you know said so go on live I'm just uh, and, and and I'm talking as I'm learning and then this is also one of the best way to to kind of to learn by teaching by by saying what I'm saying right now the words that are coming out from my mouth it's basically creating a neural pathway in my brain right so it's like a double whammy. I, I, I learn faster by just talking to you guys. And then I learn also uh, much more engaging by just Googling whatever I don't understand in the, in, you know, whatever jargon, like input shape, what is target themes, Googling it immediately. That's why my brains just keep on engaging. And then I also doing live or doing like recording this. So you can, you can learn also uh, as much uh, from me as I learn about this thing, this material, material. So this is uh, this is like mind blowing to me. This kind of learning is amazing. And Google has, well, Kaggle, uh, well, just bought by Google, has made this possible. Like just put everything in one place. Like the, the, I don't have to set up a GPU. I don't have to set up a Python. You know, setting up a Python is a headache. You know, it's a headache. So no wonder. I'm going slightly off tangent here, but no wonder, um, like like Google has a Chromebook. I don't know if you ever tried Chromebook, but it's amazing because it's just, it's like internet is like, you can call it a, a dumb laptop because, because basically it's a thin laptop because you cannot like put a bunch of stuff there. You can like put a limited number of apps, you know, because it's, it doesn't have a like big uh, hardware, uh, sorry, big hard drive. Right, so you can. I think you can just put like Android app, you know, several apps, but you cannot. You cannot install like a, like QuickTime. You cannot install, for example, like uh, 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 like the normal like Windows or Apple uh, 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 software, you know. But um, because everything nowadays is on the cloud, so you don't have to like put a bunch of stuff on your laptop. Yeah. You know? As long as you got an internet, and then you hook into the internet, and then boom, you that's it. Um, so sorry, sorry about that, guys. Okay, so going back here, so it's using a convolution two-dimensional, it's sequential. I think sequential is um, let's let's do this again. Convolution to the uh, sequential. I I think this is uh, I think this is uh, um, it's a. Uh, it's not recurrent. 
uh, it's like a more fit forward kind of uh, um, fit forward kind of uh, uh, network. Let me see. Um, Kind of blah 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 blah. Hmm. Where can I see sequential? I don't get my model. Sequential. Okay, let's see. My model is. Where do you get this one? Let's see. Go and up again. I am still thinking, still thinking, still thinking, still thinking. Just don't slip on me. Okay, don't slip on me. Don't slip on me. Don't slip on me. Sequential convolution 2D. I cannot get this sequential model. Getting some the correct sequential model is a linear stack of layers. Okay. So I guess you have the nonlinear one. It's a linear stack of layers. You can get a sequential model by passing a list of layers instances to the constructor. Model sequential. Okay. Linear stack of layers. Okay. First layer sequential model and only the first because following layers can do automatic shape in transitivity. Okay. Multi layer perceptron for multi class of classification. Sequential what is getting started. What is sequential model? What is sequential convolution 2D? An example for combining RN and it. But it's a linear, it's a linear model. It's a linear model. Okay. Okay. Uh, we can we can still uh, come back with that to later. Um cross that one more time. Okay, okay. What is the control? Convolution. Convolution model. Convolution. Sequential combination. Oh, so there's parallel and sequential, okay. It depends on what they seem to be very fundamental in the architecture because more of this is a parallel and put it over as a user in sequential. Okay, I see. I feel less than the model depends on what. Uh, first with the parallel. Okay. Let's see. Okay, so where's the input? Parallel. So it is parallel. Okay. So you can show it's just like linear. 
say like sequential. Okay, I think sequential is more like the the the, the standard. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm not I'm not sure um, why it's using, uh, but I know sequential is the, the I think the, the the more traditional way of doing things, right? Okay. So anyway, so in this case, there's a one there's a one confessional here. It's the first layer. Um, the kernel size is four, right? Using activation ralu, which is supposed to be a good activation before it used to be sigmoid, I think sigmoid uh, function. Uh, but I heard the 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 um, the better one is uh, is a leaky ralu. That's what I heard. And then there's another layer. Okay, this is second layer. Kernel size four. And then you're using a drop out, and then another layer, a bigger one, 128. Another layer again, and then and then and then drop out, and then two more layers, 256 and 256, and then you flatten it, you drop out, and then dance, and then another dance. The activation is softmax, the last one because you want to make it like zero and one, I think, to compress it between zero and one. Um, so they're using all ReLU except the, the last layer, which is softmax, right? And then my model compile, and then you compile using an optimizer, Adam, plus categorical cross entropy matrix accuracy. I'm not sure about that. Um, let's 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 do this. Let's say um, model compile atom. Model compile atom. What is that? Optimizer. 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 Uh, what does song? What does what does model compile Adam do? Okay. Okay. Let's see. Adam. Gentle introduction to the Adam optimize optimization algorithm. Okay, the choice of optimizing the value dependent can be different within the code. So, okay, it's an extension of stochastic gradient descent. Oh, okay, this is I think the um, um, stochastic gradient descent is is is, is an algorithm for uh, back propagation. And, and stochastic is the one that's to in, um, um, decrease the, the, the chances that it's stuck on just one value. The method to optimize model. How the item algorithm works and how it is different from the related mod methods. Okay. The classical, instead of classical stochastic gradient design. Okay. Update network weights. Yeah. So this is basically uh, the back the back propagation to update the network weights iteratively. Okay. Okay. Adaptive moment estimation. How does Adam work? Okay, it's given from the Scottish gradient descent. So classic gradient descent maintain a single learning rate. Oh, a single learning rate. Okay, I guess this, the rate is adaptive for all weight updates and the learning rate does not change. Okay, see that guys? Does not, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it bigger here. Does not change, okay? For all weights updates, it's only single learning rate. A learning rate is maintained for its network weights and separately adapted as learning unfolds 
Oh, a learning rate is maintained for each network and separately attached. The method computes individual adaptive learning rates for different parameters for estimate of first and second moments of the gradients. The other describe Adam as combining the advantage of two other extensions. Oh. That is so cool. Wow. The method computes individual adaptive learning rates. Oh my gosh. For different parameters. Okay, so it's it's a the the learning is going to keep on changing depend depending on the parameters. Okay. Adam is effective. Okay. Okay. That is so cool. The last categorical okay, optimizer. So this is basically the, um, the 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 back propagation thing, the one that make it um, uh, optimize. Of course. Okay. So let's run this. Let's run this. So here we see some examples of a hand making. There's 27 letters, right? We're training on 90% and validating on 10% of our data. And then the batch size is just the batch size. Uh, and so we're going to augment changing. There should be the same size as our. Okay, I'm just waiting, guys. So I think it's. it's it should show me something. Input data so that it knows what to map to what. Uh, mm. And so because we had 64 by 64 was our pixels, um, was our, our target size for images, that's what we're going to start out with. Uh, and then you can see the input. I'm doing a cheat sheet chit here on YouTube. So, and there. I'm still waiting for the model to complete. Stride and another layer with uh, a larger stride, and then we kick out the um, uh, nodes that aren't doing much, and then we have an even larger layer uh, with stride of one and stride of two, um, and then we we flatten everything down, uh, and then we kick out the useless things again, uh, and then we create a dense layer where every node is connected to every other node, um, and then finally we um, take that layer and we, we get our output out of it. Right. So this is it is this layer that is taking you know all of this information that a uh, an actual brain would use. I tend to see people use uh, for and all the way down, hence sequential. This is a type of model within the Keras models that we're building. Uh, we have to compile, uh, so we specify we, what we want our optimizer to be. So how we how we choose to. Um, the the one thing I hope, you know, this this thing because I do not know whether it's it's already doing or not. Um, I'm just gonna like, do it again, I guess. I hope it's working. I don't know whether it's working. It's working like the sixth time. So I it should have like a indicate indicator here. There's no indicator. Like whether it's running. Right. Um, even the, the this one is just still just like on. It doesn't say anything over here under the sessions. Um, so I don't know whether it's like really running or not. Um, okay, but We'll see. We'll see. Just wait for a few how minutes. how we move towards a more optimum output given our input and uh, our, our feedback on whether we were right or not, uh, and then how we're looking at loss. And you can you can play with these. There's a lot of different options for them. Uh, and then also what metrics you're going to record. So here Dan's just recording accuracy. I tend to like uh, having more metrics because I'm that kind of nerd. Uh, and then you you train the darn thing. Um, so sort of the general idea of of training is that you um okay so i guess i guess it's already doing okay let's let's just do this model fit okay oh okay here we go it's working now we talk one it's, it's you start. start randomly and you, you push all your data through and you get to the end so 
so right now you can see it's working now it's epoch there's like five epoch right um where is the five or does it say oh five uh here here sorry sorry epoch five here right um estimate time is five minutes for one epoch so you can see the loss is getting supposed to be getting smaller and the accuracy is getting higher um this is gonna take a while guys um let's see okay what else can we um uh, yeah drop out drop drop out has to do with that's it convolution um uh convolution 2d dropout I think it has to do with uh, trying to uh, to make it like less overfitting. Um, drop out between two convolution layers and best normalization. Drop out regular regularization in deep learning models with cross. A simple, powerful regulation technique for neural net. And deep learning model is dropout. In the post, you will discover the dropout regulation texting and how to apply it to your model. After reading this post, you will know okay, how to use dropout, blah blah blah. How to use dropout in your reading, how to tune. Okay, dropout regulation. Uh, Drop a simple way to put them from overfitting. Okay. Okay. So, which means um, overfitting uh, basically is not generalized, right? The model when you when you after you train the model because uh, the model probably is too much. There's too much um, 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 too much model that has the same type of pattern, basically. You know. Because the model probably is not, um, it's not diversified enough, you know. So you want to do uh, is a regulation technique. It's called dropout. It's a technique. Randomly selected neurons are ignored during training. Ah, oh. so they are dropped out randomly. Okay. So basically, if you have like almost the same, the idea is, is if you have almost the same like. Uh, pattern or you're talking about uh, uh, classical uh, fission, yeah, fission classification uh, uh, neural net. If you have the same type of, let's say, classifying cat or dog, as the same type of cat, really exactly the same, the way the, the cat sits, the, the, the type of cat, let's say, is Sammy's cat, really exactly the same photograph or it's just slightly different, different probably going slightly rotated a bit different. So you want to, to, to um, uh, to randomly select the neurons, you want to uh, ignore it because when you have um, um, the same um, the same type of uh, pattern, right? Which means it will always it will always uh, or most likely will always uh, light up the same type of neurons, right? Let's say for example that you have hundred neurons, right? In the in a in a neural network. So it's always light up the same, the, the type of neurons is always the same. Let's say type up, uh, light up neurons number one and number 10 and number 100 and number 50. It's always that neuron. So by randomly selected uh, uh, neurons, you are going to ignore it. For example, you have one, two, three, 50 and 100 neurons, right? And then you want to randomly select that. It's also saying basically you are having a different patterns of uh, uh, images. That is the basic idea. Okay, so they are drop out randomly. This means that their contribution to the activation downstream neuron is temporarily removed on the forward pass, and any weight updates are not applied to the neuron on the backward pass. Okay, and any weight updates are not applied to the neurons on the backward. Okay, because because that neuron is supposed to be dead at the first place, right? So you don't you don't apply um, a weight updates when you back propagate. 
as a neural network learns neuron weights settle into their context within it. Okay, let's see here. Where are we now? Um, oh. oh, where? Okay. Hey, where am I? Wait, what? Why is it? Wait, no? Hold on. Come on, man. What? Why is it? Doesn't. I don't know what's going on. What? Hey. Where is it? It's supposed to be running. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I don't know what's happening, guys. It seems doesn't work right now. Hmm. Sorry, right, guys. I don't know what's happening here, so I have to stop this one right now. Um. It just say CPU 117%, GPU is on, the RAM is 4 gig. Um, oh, wait, wait, wait. What? I don't get it. Why? Okay, 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 okay. I'll, I'll do it again. Let's see. I'm not... I don't know why this thing happened. Right? There you go. I don't know why is this happening. Okay, actually you can use this as well. Okay. Fun. Okay. Okay, now it's running. Again. I don't know why it's stopping earlier. Okay, now it's it's running again. I'm just going to close this. I, I don't have to see it. Oh, okay, if, if I go outside here and then I go back here, will it stop? No, right? Yeah, that's what I did. So I don't know what happened here. <laughs> it's like stopping. Um, okay, sorry about that. Okay, so we know what, what is the uh, dropout is, right? It's basically to, to make it... Um, uh, overfitting by by dropping some of the neurons by uh, randomly, right? Um, 
I don't know what 0.5 is. Let's, let's, let's do caress. Probably like 0.5 neuron. I don't know. Um, caress. Drop out. Um, let's see. Consumer my dogs. Drop out. So. I hope it's still running. Okay, still running. Good. Where is the drop out? The models you can show at the audience. Okay, guys, excuse me. I need to go. I'll go back in like um, two minutes, one minute, okay? I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back here, guys. Uh, sorry about that. I just need to go really quick. Uh, nature calls, <laughs> and uh, probably it's about like five minutes. I have to go. Uh, let's see, because I have to bring my um, my daughter. Oh no! Okay. No, actually, uh, my friend actually is offering to bring my daughter to the gymnastic, and that means I have to bring her back and her friend. No, oh, sorry. So I have to bring, okay, sorry guys, I have to go in like two minutes. I have to stop this, okay? I can take the girls home from practice. Okay, my friend said, I can take the girls home from practice today. What does it mean? My brain doesn't work. It's four o'clock in the afternoon, which means, okay. So that means he will bring the girls home from practice, which means I have to bring the girls to the practice. Okay. Got it. I will bring them to the practice. I can take the girls home from practice. Okay. Okay. I guess um, I cannot finish this. Hopefully, we'll we'll see if it's finished. I, because I, I really I have to go in like five minutes. I think I, I, otherwise my daughter will yell at me. She's a yeller, all right. All right. Okay. So now the second epoch. So the first epoch, the accuracy is very low. It's only 48%, about 50%, right? I don't know what's the deal with this. Right? Why 1.6? I don't, I don't get, I don't get this number. Like the loss is. Why is the the second epoch is always much better? 
I don't get that too. Like, what's what's the logic behind that? From from what I understand, epoch is a way of um, so the the way neural net or deep learning works is you the in it when you initialize the, the the weight for the first time is being in the last randomly right, and you know how it uh, it trying to minimize loss or the the optimization problem is using like a gradient descent. So it's basically uh, using a, a, a factor where how to go down, basically, to minimize the loss, right? So in, in some cases, it's like when you first, the computer initialize the weight, right? The first time you initialize the weight. It so happens the weight could be like in a, in a position where, because it could be like there's many valleys, could be in a position, I'm going to bring you there. So are we going now? Can we do it like in five minutes? Can you be late or no? Or we have to really have to go now. Okay, so okay, I, I really have to go now, so I'm gonna stop this. Um, I do not know why it is. It's stopping again. No, it's not. It's not actually it's still running. Oh, it's epoch number three. Cool. Okay, so um, what I'm going to say is uh, epoch is basically it's like dropping uh, uh, randomly because the, the computer generated randomly the, the, the initialized weight so it's like dropping the, the the weights of the people in the mountain because there are several valleys so um, and then it's trying to, to find the lowest valley right uh, by using gradient descent and the, the Back propagation algorithm, right? Um, so that's why he has to to be given like a several chance to, to to be dropped from the top, right? Because you you can just drop when the first time you initialize weight, it can be dropped just uh, just to the valley that has like the the lowest the lowest uh, optimization, for example, right? But this, the second one could be a, a, a better one. But the one I, I, I don't understand is, it seems that the first epoch is always the worst. I mean, if it's random, how can it be? So I think my analogy is not that correct. It could be, it could be, it could be if it's not totally randomized. If, if you already set, the first time it's already being dropped in that area, the second epoch cannot be on that area. Because it's always improving the accuracy. It's always improving. Um, yeah. So uh, I my my guess is five minutes, Rich. Three minutes. Three minutes. I'm still. This is like. It's still uh, training the neural network. You see, it's working. Yeah. The accuracy is going up and then the loss is going down. Right. And then the other thing is that one I don't understand about this is why the loss and the accuracy it doesn't add up to one. Huh. Probably we can we can take a look at it. Ah, why accuracy and loss? Mm -hmm. Doesn't not add up to one in neural net. How is it possible that validation loss is? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, good. For epoch. <laughs> I think we can do this. Okay. Oh, it has to get on. Okay. It has their own chart, whatever. Okay. Um, I think I'm more interested in this answer, the one that's... Uh, so this is what I mean, guys. I mean, you don't have to like 
when you're trying to answer your questions, right, and then you Google it, uh, if if you get the answer straight away, it's good. But sometimes it doesn't work, uh, work like that because life, okay, get this, get this philosophy. Life doesn't work in a non-linear way. Get that? Okay? We, we cannot expect life to work in a linear way. Okay? Meaning, um, it doesn't happen like step one, step two, step three, step four, like that. No. It, it, sometimes you have to do step one and then step 100 and then step 1000 and then go back to step two, like that. Right? So that's what it means linear, non-linear. So, by the way, guys, this neural network is a non-linear they call it it's a non-linear uh, algorithm, right? And this is also because it's non-linear, it's a universal function, meaning you can put anything and because the function is universal, means so flexible, it can, it kind of can uh, solve anything, right? But if it's linear function, then the function is just can solve a specific case because it's just linear. And it's almost done. Two more, two more minutes. I think. Two more minutes. This uh, epoch number. Have you? you uh, I'm talking to my daughter. Sorry. So um, she's going to do gymnastic with a friend, and I have to like bring her. It's, it's about like ten minutes from here. Um, that, which means after that I don't have to bring her back. That means that's the job of the other parents to bring her back and her friend. That's awesome. Okay. So the fourth epoch is done. It's only 89%. Let's see the okay, this is the last epoch. Okay. Okay, ETA, estimated time, is about two, two minutes. Keras accuracy, uh, mass accuracy again increases after every epoch. Okay, this is kind of a question that I am interested. Because um, if my analogy is right, that doesn't make sense. The one that's dropping in a, in a different valleys, you know. When training a neural network using badges, should accuracy increase after every epoch? That the more the whole data set is seen, the better the performance should be. So if the performance decreases at an epoch, should I be worried that something is wrong? Or do I have to wait several epochs to just I would say it depends on the data set architecture, hence for are not normal. But in general, loss should improve. You have you can have a look at this practical case to better interpret loss. Okay. Last function. Very high learning rates, the epoch. Good learning rate. Ah, this is an adverb. And then this is high learning rate. So you have to good enough. Keep on going down. But it's very high. Okay. Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay. So my, my analogy cannot just can be just be taken in a grain of salt. Okay. Almost done. One more minute. Okay, guys. So I think that's 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 about it. Uh, the, the 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 main thing I want to convey um, using this um, using this video is just just do it. Just just learn as you go. I think that's the motto here because especially if you are into this area like data science, deep learning, the progress is just like happening so fast. You know, if you if you like still have the old mindset and learn the old way, like you have to learn this and this and this and this before you get to apply it, you're going to be like always like playing catch up. Okay. So... And and most of the time you're gonna get bored anyway. I, I tried that 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 path, you know. Um, and it it's just doesn't click in my mind. Even though I've been like uh, using a lot of uh, like MOOC, right? And then they, they always keep telling me you have to like be more interactive. But I didn't really what it means until I got this. Until I I 
oh, this is this is how it actually works. I just I just run it, and then if I don't understand something, I just Google it, and then I just go back and run it again, right? So here it's done already. The model feeding is ninety one percent, right? That's cool. Okay, so I'm just gonna commit this, right? I don't know why it's coming. Okay, anyway guys, I have really have to go right now.